Delight me uh, with you here in uh, Nottingham once again this afternoon. Uh, somebody here like a copy of God's Word, his uh, uh, written word that is, uh, record of the Savior, the only one that there is, with the ability that is to uh, save rescue, that's what he came for, and that's what he does, and he does, I can tell you from experience, that he does so wonderfully well. He's a loving, kind, merciful Savior, and if you would like to know him, know something or more about him, a copy of God's written word is offered to you uh, freely without any cost or any obligation to you. If you like one, feel free to come and ask for one. Gladly and freely place into your hand. Yes, when all said and done, the Word of God, He's uh, breathed it out, every single word of it, and there's some of it, there's, uh, there's a part of it that He actually has written uh, with his own finger. That is uh, those Ten Commandments given to us not to save us but to inform us to bring to you the knowledge of your sin. What it is. What it is that you do wrong. How it is that you displease God. And how it is that you're deserving of the penalty of God's law. And of course, well, that's nothing but death. The wages of sin, sin is lack of any lack of conformity to God's law, and the penalty, the wages thereof, is death. And why, of course, well, you need my Savior. You need God's love, and you need uh, the saving mercy of God found in Jesus Christ the Lord. Because the day is coming to you, and to yours truly, the day is coming when we're going to be the last, but that's not the end of it. Bible tells us, you know that just the same as I do, that's not the end of it, that's not the finish. After that, then comes the judgment. So it's important, Nottingham sinners, that you listen up, that you hear, that you take heed, to what God, the Lord, would say to you in order that, of course, in order that you might come to know him, love him, adore him, trust in him through his son, Jesus Christ, that you might be saved, rescued. Word of God for you here today in the city of Nottingham, for Nottingham sinners, listen up. For who is God save the Lord, and who is a rock save our God? He is God the Lord. He is the one, of course, whom you know exists, well, just as all men do. There's not a man, there's not a woman born into this world, a child born into this world that does not know that God is. That's not the problem. That's not the problem. You know. And because you know, you are without excuse, God says. No. How do you know? Well, because you have, uh, you have the knowledge of God in all creation, but you have it stamped in your own being. You know that you are a morally accountable creature. You have a conscience within you. Where did you get that from? From your maker? 
testifies to you when you do right to when you do wrong. Your conscience is God's agent within you testifying to the fact that you are a morally accountable creature. No, it's not that you don't know that there is a God that you know. The invisible things of him are clearly, clearly seen, God said. So you know that he is. That's not your problem. The problem is twofold. One, you hate him, and two, you're on the wrong side of it because of that. And thirdly, might, we might say, well, his wrath is revealed, his displeasure, that is, is revealed against you. So God, the rock, for who is God save the Lord? Who is a rock save our God? And of course, he has revealed himself uh, he is to be seen as handiwork in all his creation, everything that he made, uh, the galaxies, the stars, the planets, earth, all creatures, great and small, not happenstance, nothing to do with evolution. That's not science. That's scientism. That's nothing to do with science. Not scientific at all. In the beginning, God, the true, the living God, created the heavens and the earth and everything therein, and he made you too from the dust of the earth. So God, he is, you know that he is, and you ought to be fearing him, glorifying him, trusting in him through his son, Jesus Christ. Only way by which you can be brought to a knowledge of God through his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the revelation of God. God has given us his word on it, revealed himself to us, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God the Father sent his Son into the world and sent him in his love, not because he had to, not because he needed to, not because there was any pressure on him, not because he owed you anything, no, simply out of his love, out of the mere pleasure, the good pleasure of God, out of his heart of love, he, did, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world in order that those who believe, trust that is, put their confidence fully in Jesus Christ and him alone, that they might be saved, that they might have everlasting life through his son Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave, gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Some people you see, they say, well, if God is, then uh, why this and why that, why the other? Why pain, why suffering, or why not? Why not would be a better question, would it not? You know, uh, and you know, some people think, you know, that they, they deserve better than they've got, you know. I don't deserve this. You know, some tragedy, some uh, affliction comes upon them, you know. One minute they're telling you that there's no God, you know. And then some trouble comes to them, some affliction falls out in the world, amongst humanity, or yourself personally. And the next minute, you know, you're blaming God for it, you know. I don't deserve this, they say. Well, let me tell you, before you ask the question about Turkey uh, the other day and the catastrophic disaster there, before you come to me with the question, if there's a God, then why that? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, please, listen, you deserve even worse than that. There's only one thing that any human being born into this world deserves, and that's the damnation of hell. That's what you deserve. That's all that you deserve. You have no rights, none whatsoever. The question, the question in your mind should not be, why is there suffering? Why is there pain? Why is there earthquakes? Why is there wars? Why is there famine? 
why is there pestilence? The question is, why not? Why not? When you've got a humanity that's at war, an enmity against a holy and a righteous God. Why not pain? Why is there not more? Why are there not more earthquakes? Why are there not more suffering? That's the question you should be asking yourself. And why, why is it that you're not under a heap of rubble in Turkey? Why is it that you're walking and breathing? Why is it that maybe today you're pain free? Because God has given you a space. Because God has given you a little bit of room by which you might consider this. But except ye repent, like many who have perished in that tragedy in, the, in Turkey, many have perished and gone out of this world. If that was you, where would you be today? Because as Jesus says, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Repent of what? Of your evil heart of unbelief. That would be a starting point, would it not? Because there is a God. There is a God you see and you know it. I mean, answer me this question. Why is there something and not nothing? Why is there something and not nothing? Where does something come from? The magic of evolution? Come on, grow up. Grow up. That's a fairy tale for <laughs> adults. Uh, adults. Well, that, that's questionable these days. Uh, why is there something and not nothing? Where does something come from? And how did nothing know where to put everything? Uh, how come there's order in the universe? And how come that, how come in all creation, how come that, all that stuff that nothing brought about, tell me, how come, how come, how come nothing knew where to put everything? And how does nothing keep it in place? Go up, go up, get wise, get your head together, get it into a Bible and read God's word. God, the Lord, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, who has given us his word. God, who has revealed to us these things that you might know him. And know him through his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent into the world to be a savior, to rescue you from that unbelief. To rescue you from that wicked heart of unbelief. And to rescue you from that damnation of hell that you deserve because that's all that you deserve. Nothing more. Not an ounce less. Every one of us. That's all that we deserve. And that there be few that are saved. Only few. Only ever few. In any generation. Never myriads. Never many. Always only a few that are saved. Only a few that God rescues out of the masses of humanity. But that any are saved. You know that there's even that there's just one man, a voice in the wilderness, standing here in your city center, lifting up Jesus Christ before you that you might be saved. There's a wonder. There's a wonder work of God. That any are saved, any are all are saved. That's a wonder. A wonder work of God. Because only through a wonder work of God can you be saved. The miracle of grace. God causing you to be reborn. Because you'll never believe. You'll never get out of that wicked, evil heart of unbelief. You'll never get out of that till God takes it away. Only he can rescue you from it. You remain blind, daft, stupid. You remain believing in fairy tales like evolution. You know. I don't believe any nonsense at all. You know, anything but the truth. You can't believe the truth because it's not, it's not given to you to believe the truth. It's given to you to believe the lie. You believe the lie and you live out of the lie. And it gets more stupid every day. You know, you're thinking that women can become men and men women. Insanity, absolute utter insanity. Huh? And it grows by the day. 
That's the fruit. That's the fruit of your evil hearts of unbelief. That's what you get when you reject the truth. When you don't receive a love of the truth, God gives you over to delusion, you know, to believe stupid things like transgenderism and to engage, you know, in foul, abominable practices such as homosexuality. Not to mention the fornication, the absolute not of destruction of the foundation of marriage, you know, in your society. And here you are now reaping all the fruits and all the benefits of it. The insanity, the insanity of your culture. And soon to grow worse, I tell you. Oh, much worse before the end comes. So that there's suffering, that there's pain, that there's sicknesses, there's tragedies, accidents you call them, there's no such thing. But that's what you call them. These tragedies that come upon humankind, a wake-up call, a wake-up call. Because you see, here you are going about your business today, and in spite of what happened, that tragedy in Turkey the other day, in spite of that, you still don't think about your own latter end. You don't think about eternity. You won't think about these things because, because you don't want to. You don't want to. Yeah. But God hauls it. God takes these tragedies and he hauls it before your mind and he makes you think about it. Your latter end. Because that's all you've got to look forward to in this world. Death, trolling you, stalking you every moment. Doesn't matter what you achieve, doesn't matter what pleasure, doesn't matter what you, you earn, doesn't matter what you accomplish in this world. All you've got to look forward to ultimately is death. Death is coming for you. You don't want to think about that. You put that under the carpet, you pretend it doesn't exist. But it's coming for you, the good reapers on your case, he's coming, and soon, maybe sooner than you think, he's coming and he's going to wrap his slimy fingers around your soul, draw it out of your body, and bring it before the judgment seat of God. Coming for you, personally, coming for you. That's all you've got. And your evil hearts of unbelief, that's all you've got. That's all you've got. Nottingham sinners, all that you've got to look forward to. So it doesn't matter what you get, you got no more than that. After that, well, then comes the damnation of hell. Unless God rescues you, unless God saves you, unless God the Lord, unless he delivers you, for who is God? Save the Lord, there is no other. The God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, whom I declare to you here today, the Father who loved the, world, loved the world, gave his only begotten Son in his love and gave him. What does he mean gave him? Well, gave him as a gift to the world. But gave him how? Gave him, became, became one of us, became, took our nature and lived that blameless, that spotless life and died that death on the cross, suffered, I tell you, more than anybody in any earthquake, suffered more than any man ever, ever did or ever will suffer, suffered the pains of hell on that cross, suffered the damnation of hell on that cross took damnation upon himself in order that sinners, like Nottingham sinners, might be saved from such a catastrophic end. So whatever pain, whatever suffering comes to you in this world, and it'll come, or it'll come, but whatever and however shape or form it comes to you, and whatever degree, please remember this, will you? that in all your suffering and the pain, you will never, never suffer anything like the Son of God suffered. 
And why? And why? Why did God do that with his own son? Why did God, God so allow his son to be so afflicted so that he could save a sinner like you, nothing of sinners, so that you can be rescued from such an end as that, so that you can be delivered from the damnation of hell, from what you deserve. So, uh, that's some opposition today. Just turn the volume up, that's all we do. So unless you believe, you see, it's only believers, whosoever believeth shall not perish, perish, that is, in eternal flames. When Jesus says, you know, talking about a tragedy, a tower fell down, you know, and his disciples, they came to him and they were asking them, why did that happen to these people? Was it because they were worse sinners, great sinners? No, said Jesus. No, said Jesus. And he spoke about another, another tragedy where a, a tower fell down and men were killed. Not because they were great, greater sinners, said Jesus. But his answers to his disciples was this. He says, except ye repent, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So you get it, friends? You get it? Perish. Perish, you know what that means? Eternal, perish in eternity, die in your sin, go out of this world in the same way, the same fashion as which you were born into it. Unless there's a day, unless there's a time that you can point to and say, that's when I was born again. That's when God came to me in his grace and changed me, removed my evil heart of unbelief took the desire for the wickedness, took the, took the evil from me, changed me, made me a new creature in his son Jesus Christ. Unless you can point to a, such a time as that in your history, you're still in your natural state. You're still as you were conceived and born, and that's in sin. And if you die in your sin, says Jesus, you perish for all eternity. Perish, that is, the damnation of hell, that is, eternal flames, fires that never go out, says Jesus, where the worm dieth not and the flames are not quenched. Instead of the unquenchable love of God, you get the unquenchable flames and fires of hell. That's the end of your unbelief. That's the end of your earthly existence. That's what you deserve. That's what you deserve. That's all that you deserve. That's all that you merit. Nothing else, nothing but perishing in hell. But Jesus Christ came, came to save sinners. Sinners like you, Nottingham sinners. He came to save men and women from such a catastrophic end. A worse catastrophe, I tell you, dying in your unbelief is a worse catastrophe, I tell you, than any earthquake or any disease. To die in your sin and to be faced with a lost eternity. You must believe. You must repent. You must turn. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or you'll die or you'll perish in your sin and you're faced with the damnation of hell. That's the end of you. That's what you've got to look forward to. That's all that you deserve. So don't be saying that you deserve more. Don't be just saying you deserve better. Don't be saying I don't deserve this. When trouble comes to you, Ask, you the, ask yourself the question, why, why, is there, why is there not more trouble in my life? Why is there not more pain in my life? Because you deserve more. Your wicked hearts of unbelief, you deserve more, much, much more, worse. 
unless Jesus saves you, unless the Son of God rescues you. But God, this God of whom I speak, the God, the God of, of Holy Scripture, the God of the Bible, that is, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, that God, the only God, the true God, the living God, triune God, God who so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son up to the death of the cross that you might be saved from, not made wealthy, not made healthy, not made prosperous, but saved salvation from the damnation of hell. And you are, you are, you won't hear this. You won't hear this in your churches in Nottingham today. They won't tell you these things. It's not the Jesus of your churches that you need. It's the Jesus of the Bible that you need. The one who tells us it like it is. The one who's honest. The one who's not a salesman. The one who doesn't come to you with special offers, but tells you the truth and warns men and women over and over again. He warns, warns, warns. Why? Because he loves. And because love warns when it sees people in danger, imminent danger. And so he warns, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And you're sick. Excuse me. Yes. I'm a Christian. Are you? Just, right, yeah. But um, I don't... How did that happen? Huh? How did that happen? What do you mean, how did it happen? What kind of hell happened? Oh, um, Sky. Sky's a Christian too. Yeah. Um, how did it happen? Yeah. I uh, started going to church. Yeah. And then I became Christian. I began getting baptized. But how did you become a Christian? How did that happen? I just became a Christian. You don't just become a Christian. Jesus says you must be born again. Yeah, that's what, does what, that yeah. what does that mean? You get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're born again, you change your ways, you do what's right. What church do you go to? Sorry? What church do you go to? I can't remember. So, what church do you go to? Uh, the People's Church in Westford. Yeah, it's very small. Okay. But uh, I did Bible studies and I, yeah, I was a good book. I agree with spreading the Bible, spreading the gospel. Obviously, that is what Jesus tells us to do. Yeah, right. uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't agree spreading it to people. I agree spreading the gospel, but not spreading it to I'm also a gay Christian. Okay, what would you, you think about a drunk Christian? What would you think of? What would you, you think about an adulterous Christian? What would you, what would you think about an idolatrous Christian? What does 1 Corinthians chapter 6 say? Well, I tell you, it, tells, it says that uh, homosexuals are excluded from the kingdom of God. It doesn't? Did you okay. know? Shall I read it for you? Shall I read it? The Bible did not say anything about homosexuality until 1946. That's nonsense. This Bible, of, this Bible of mine was written. Uh, really, I know more than you, mate. No, I don't think so. Here you go. Here we go. Uh, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor, ad nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall enter the kingdom of God. And that's the Bible, my dear. That's the Bible as we've had it. The modern modern versions to excluded from the repent of your homosexuality. You must be born again. You don't even know what that means. That was made. You don't even know what that means. You don't even I'll tell you friends what it means to be born again. It's not something you do. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to cause yourself to be born again. Think about it in human terms, yeah? There was nothing you did to, to, to be born physically, right? You had no part in that at all. And you have no part in being born again. It's something God does. It's a miraculous, 
It's a supernatural act of God in causing a man or woman to be reborn spiritually, not physically. That is to say, that is to say God comes to them and he puts his life into their souls and he puts his love into their hearts so that they no longer hate God and love their sin. No longer do they love the homosexuality, but they hate it. No longer do they love the fornication, but they hate it. No longer do they love the drunken, but they hate it. Yes, ma'am. Why is it fornication? Why? Because God instituted marriage. No, no, it didn't. It's God's institution. It's God's institution. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's the Bible. I'm going. I'm, it's the Bible I'm coming from. No, this, this is God's word. My word shall remain forever, sir. Right. Heaven and earth may pass away, says Jesus, but my word shall abide forever. By this word, you'll be judged, man. You'll be judged. You're arguing against God. He's going to judge you. He's going to judge you. Oh, yeah, yeah, he has, yes. He has. Unless you're born again. Can I tell you? Let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. No, it might, might, not be, might not be acceptable to you. There's a vile practice. That's why God sends them to hell. That's why God sends them to hell. I'm a lesbian. What's wrong with me? I'm a lesbian. What's wrong with me? I've been in a loving relationship for 30 years. That's not love, dear. That's not love. 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 That's lust. That's lust. No. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me read it again. You missed it. You didn't hear it. No, know ye not Jesus, that the unrighteous not. shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not mean. deceived. Neither fornicators, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous shall enter the kingdom of God. You're excluded, man. You need to repent. Believe the gospel, madam. Before you breathe your last and go out of this world and face the damnation of hell. That's what awaits you, man. That's all that we deserve. Any one of us. The question should not be, why is there suffering? Why is there not more suffering? We're so wicked. You're wicked creating, hearts of unbelief. You're creating suffering. And God needs to save you. So you need to be born again. Unless you're born again, says Jesus, you cannot see, Sexuality. you cannot Sexuality. enter the kingdom of God. Ah. You, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. As such for some of you, the apostle says, so the possibility is there, you see. There's a way out, there's a way of escape, and Jesus, he is the way of escape. He's the only way of escape. He's the only way out of it. He's the only one who can change the heart and take the love for homosexuality out of it and love God and love God's institution of marriage. One man, one woman. Two genders, guys. You know? Only two genders, not a hundred. Male and female, God made them. Yeah, and he instituted holy matrimony between a man and a woman. Yeah, everything yeah, else yeah. is an abomination. Oh, everything you else, everything else is unnatural and contrary to, to God and to God's man. law. So friends here today, except you repent and believe the gospel, you cannot be saved. But you can be saved. That's Listen. Not. Jesus preaches love. That's can not. I do only, you? only if Jesus Look saves you. you are, only if Jesus saves you. Oh, no, you're ignorant, madam. You're I'm ignorant. To you. You're ignorant. But you're not listening, listening at all. To you well, listen to me. Let me read it again. Let, you, let me read it again. I would like you, you said, Oh, no, you time. didn't, you didn't, you listen, you didn't listen. I would like to you didn't listen. You what did I say? What did I say? Well, what did I say? You, you, what did I say? You hate sexuality. 
No, I didn't touch that. I didn't say that at all. I didn't say that at all. What did I say? What did I say? That's so who said, where did he say in the Bible that I can't fall in love with a female? I just read it for you. But who said this? God. And don't you think we should move on with time? No, God said no, that? no. Why would you like Because his word stands forever. No, he does it's the not. One, it's, the one that you're gonna, it's the one you're going to be judged by. Look around. You're not going to be judged mean? by the standard of your culture, the standard of your age. Just because it's fashionable, but you're it'll going be out to of be fashion. By your sex 20, 30 years ago, they were locking homosexuals up. Now it's popular, but it'll go out of fashion again. It's not you know? a fashion. It'll go out of fashion again. It's not but God's word continues what? on, never changes. You're it's like Him. He is the changeless sin. God. I am the same yesterday, today, oh. and forever, he says. His word never changes. You're he condemns sinner. it. He condemns sin. He condemns sinner. sinners. You call us Hell, sinners. that's you all that you are deserving of, friends. And except you repent, you, you shall all likewise perish in your sin, God. unless that is, unless God rescues you by his son, Jesus Christ, Unless he causes you, causes you by his sovereign, divine power, unless he causes you to be born again. Only, he, only God can do that. It's not of the will of man. It's not of the flesh. It's not of the flesh. It's not of your will. It's only of God's will. Only, only God can do this for you. But he does so, you see. In the context of the preaching of the gospel, causing men and women to hear about their sin and to repent of their sin. The one thing that's required of you, my friend, unless you repent, says Jesus, unless you turn from it, the evil heart of unbelief, unless you turn from your sin and believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, I tell you, you cannot, cannot, cannot be saved. Where's your positivity? One God, one Savior, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's the good news. That's the good news that God so loved the world. A world of sinners. A world deserving of nothing. But hell, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, his beloved son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish in their sin, but have everlasting life. Oh, hey. Give me that horn. You got my pocket again. I love the police on you, that's my fault. Because Jesus would be. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Did you see how he was preaching center. about God what and he attacks a woman? He's, he's uh, not what insane. are you? What are you? I'm happy in my life. Happy? You don't sound it, sir. You sound very bitter, sir. I'm bitter with you. Ah. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Because and you're a sinner so on, your your on your way to a lost eternity, sir. Don't take things out of my pocket. Take things out of my pocket. The police come. So like I say, friends, one escape route. God, the Savior, who sent his son, only begotten son into the world, that through him that you might, might be saved. No guarantee. God show you mercy, Nottingham. God show you mercy even today. Deserving? Deserving what? You don't even deserve this sunshine today. You deserve nothing at the hands of God. Sinners, rebels, 
enmity in your heart against God, wickedness, wicked hearts of unbelief. But God, in his goodness, in his love, in his mercy, in his kindness, sent his son Jesus Christ into the world that through him that you might be saved, but only, only I tell you, in the way of repentance and faith towards the Son of God, Jesus Christ, made of a woman, made under the law, to rescue, to redeem those under the law, under the condemnation of God's law. Friends, friends, your greatest need, I tell you, greater need than even your very next breath, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sent by God, the only true and living God, sent into the world and through him that you might be saved. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? He is Jesus Christ. He is that rock. The one upon whom you can build, build your life and eternity. Jesus tells us there's a storm coming. The storm of his judgment <coughs> coming upon mankind. And in that storm, well, it will depend upon what you've been building upon. You've been building upon sand, whether it be secular or religious sand, building upon anything but the rock. When that storm of God's judgment comes, the sand is shifted, the foundation is washed away, blown away, and down will come everything that you put your hopes in, everything that you built upon, comes crashing down and you into the depths and into the pits of hell. Unless you build, and that's what the wise man does. Ask any builder, the wise man you builds, builds his house on the she rock. She is calling the police to you. That's the right. Way that you well, have I, have a, I have a perfect gun to my she pocket. She pocket. did. I've got it on camera. I've got it on camera. That's fine. I've got it on camera. She went into my pocket. She stole out of my pocket. She's a thief. She's a thief. You are. You took her phone number. She's a thief. Call the police. Call the police. By all means. So like I say, you build your house on the sand that comes crashing down. You build your house on the rock. That's what the wise man does, says Jesus. The same storm comes, the same judgment comes, but it'll be a judgment of commendation, not condemnation. It will be a good day. It will be that day when you hear the voice of the Savior say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That rock is Jesus. He's the one that you need to build on. He's the one that you, he's the foundation that you need to trust. No other foundation can a man lay than that which God has laid. He's the foundation that you need to build on. Trust in Jesus Christ. Only he can save you from that coming judgment. He's a savior God. He saves, that's what he does. That's what he came to do. That's what he stepped down into this world for, to save sinners, to save them from their sins. No, not to make you healthy, wealthy, prosperous, but to save us from the greatest evil, save us from the greatest danger, save us from the catastrophic end that you're faced with, unless that is, except that is, you repent and you believe the gospel. But he's a savior, he's a savior for all who do it. 
for all who listen, for all who hearken, for all who take heed, for all he convicts of their sin, brings to them the knowledge of their sin, and they do something with it. They seek after God. They do what he tells them to do. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will abundantly pardon. Show mercy that is. Mercy there is. Mercy for the repentant. Mercy that is for those who with all their heart, soul, strength, and mind will seek after God. Seek ye the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the rest shall be added unto you. Right priorities. Where would you be? Were you caught up in that tragedy in Turkey the other day? Where would you be today? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Seek first the kingdom of God. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise, like many of them, perish in your sin, die in your sin, and go to a lost eternity. Maybe, perhaps, it doesn't have to be that way with you. Maybe, perhaps, for you, salvation. Maybe perhaps were you to call, maybe perhaps were you to seek, maybe perhaps were you to call, cry out to God that he would have mercy upon you. Deliver you, bring you into his kingdom of love and grace in the way that only and ever and always only in the way of repentance and faith. That's why Jesus says, Repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye. The kingdom of God, of his love, of his grace, of his favor, of his acceptance, of his forgiveness, the things that you need more than you need to breathe. Obtainable. Only, only I tell you in the way prescribed by the Savior himself. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That's the only way. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. There must be a turning from the evil heart of unbelief. There must be a turning from the sin of forsaking of it. All of it. Not just some of it. That you might be saved. That you might have God's salvation. That you might have God's favor. That you might have God's blessing. That you might have God's heaven. That when you breathe your last, however that comes to you, whether it be in pain and agony, whether it be some tragedy or some disease, whatever it be, whatever it comes to you, when you breathe your last, you know you have the assurance of an eternal heaven rather than the damnation of hell that we all of us, every single one of us deserve, all that we deserve from the hand of our Maker, God. So who is God? Who is God? Save the Lord. Who is a rock? Save our God. The one who saves. The one who made you. The one who sustains your being now. Your very existence. The one who gives you air to breathe. And the one who's given you this space and time by which you may hear the gospel, the good news, that there is salvation to be found, a Savior, God, the rock. 
and who is able to save to the uttermost, even, yes, even homosexuals, yes, even thieves, even young women that try to steal things out of my pocket, even them he is able to save to the uttermost. Let me read for you again what I read. For that young woman who claims to be a, a homosexual Christian, I mean, does that sound, does that ring right with you? A drunken Christian? Huh? An idolatrous Christian? A homosexual Christian? Listen to what God, the Lord, the Rock says, the Bible says. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Who are the unrighteous? Well, he goes on to tell us what some of them are. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, that sex outside of marriage, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, that's boys that give themselves to men for toys, nor abusers of themselves, but mankind, that's homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, notice thieves as well, yeah, thieves, young women who steal things out of the pocket of the street preacher, shall inherit the kingdom of God. But the good news is, and such were some of you, says the apostle, but you were washed, sanctified, justified. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The only rock, the only God, the only Savior, the only mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So do what he tells you to do. Do his bidding. Do what he admonishes you to do. Repent ye and believe the gospel, he said. Repent ye. Repent ye, Nottingham sinners. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like to have a copy of God's word. You don't have to steal it out of my pocket. I offer it to you quite freely without any obligation to you or any cost. You'd like a copy of God's Word freely offered, freely received, read, digest, study, meditate upon God's Word. Who knows, perhaps maybe He give you that repentance that you need that faith that you need in order that you might be saved. Like a copy of God's Word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy, mercy I say, upon your precious, precious, never dying soul.